afternoon, everyone. All right, so I actually made a video this morning um, answering a question that was presented to me. Um, I think it was in response to the video that I made regarding relationship, um, something about relationships and breakups. I can't remember what I titled it exactly. And the person had uh, said that the story or the example that I was using, uh, which was the gentleman that I was communicating with a couple of days, a few days ago, um, was about addiction. And um, so it was asked of me if I can point out how to how to determine what is love or what is not love. And so I thought I did a pretty good job today, this morning, um, but after more thought, um, I think there is a more concise way to present the information. And so here I go on my way home talking to you guys about how to identify love and how to identify when it's not present. So there's, there's one thing to always remember about love and that it will never ask you to do something in exchange for it, ever. It never asks anything of you, ever. And so this is how you know when someone has love or is presenting something to you that may look like love, um, but you'll be able to tell if it is or isn't. And the example that I gave, or the example that I was using with the gentleman who was having the breakup issue is um, the when I said that the girlfriend said that she didn't want to have anything to do with him, but yet asked him for something. And she wasn't asking out of love. Like, she was asking him to stay away, but yet give me something. Does that, I don't know if that makes sense. And so, if you look at what he was doing, now he was acting in addiction. He was not acting in love when he actually helped her. He was helping her because he thought it was going to lead to more. Well, that's not love either. And the thing is, he's not loving himself as he's allowing someone else to cause him pain. So, when we look at love, it will never, ever, ever ask you to do something. It will never manipulate. It will never make you wait for it either. When someone says, give me time in order to love you, and you sit around waiting, that's not love. Meaning, that's not loving yourself. Because if you love yourself, you will engage in whatever it is that you need to engage in. If you love yourself, you will move on. If you love yourself, you will ask yourself what's going on. You won't just sit around waiting. You'll be active. You'll be proactive. So when he said, maybe I need to take this time and find out about myself, now that's a loving thing. But to sit around and wait for the another person to love them, that is not loving. And it's not loving for someone else to ask you to wait while they live their lives. And this is how you this is how you know if it's love or if it isn't love. Love never asks you to love never asks you to wait. Love never asks you to um, give up something for something else. So anytime anyone says, you know, well, you know, I like it when you do this even though you like doing something else, that's not loving. It's not loving if someone asks you to do something other than what you love. And this is how, or this is, you know, how you can tell if you are in a relationship. I don't know if I'm supposed to get, oh, I think I'm supposed to get on the 110. Um, bumblebee behind me, bumblebee car. Um, so that's how you're able to identify whether it's something whether you know you're engaging in something that's loving or unloving most relationships are not based on love so they're always going to ask you to do something in exchange for something else um, a wife may ask you to give up going out with your friends if and, and, and do something else instead with her or the family or whatever it is that's an unloving thing to do if your desire is to spend time with your friends and not at home with your family then that's your desire now, what you have to ask yourself is what you're, if what you were doing is loving. But for someone else to ask that of you is unloving. This is something you have to ask of yourself. 
and because you're always going to find some type of resentment um, if you do something that someone else asks you to do when you want to do something else. And so you, and the thing is, you'll never be able to find, um, well, I don't want to say never, but it's gonna, it would be very difficult for you to find the error in your ways if you don't carry out the error in your ways. So if someone tells you that you're doing wrong, then you're most likely not going to see it. You're going to see it as they're trying to hold you back, da 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 And this is why it's important to live out your truth, meaning, and when I say that, I mean live out your desire. No matter what your desire is, live out your desire. This is app, um, I think, uh, shoot. I don't know if I'm supposed to get, I know I'm supposed to get on the vibe, but I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get there. Uh, well, I mean, I know how to get there. I'm just trying to figure out how to meet traffic and get there. Um, this is Los Angeles. Los Angeles. You know what? I'm going to stay right here and just go with it. Because something says stay right here. So, stay right here. Um, so, yeah, that's how you uh, that's how you know if love is present or not. Um, love will never push you away and pull you in. Push you away and pull you in. Love does not do that. Because that's creating pain. It's either love is going to say, I need to work on myself. And I need space. And that's that person loving themselves. And then the other person, if they are loving, will say, I understand. I will give you your space. And I will also love myself. And take this time to investigate who I am and learn who I am. This is how you know when love is present because love always takes care of something. It never damages. It never just leaves you out there to dry. It never leaves you out there to hang. It's always supporting. Love is supporting. And so if you're in a relationship and you're not getting this, then you're not receiving love. You may be receiving things that you were taught, taught and told were love, but they're not love. If it's not supporting you, if it's causing you pain, it's not love. Love will not do that ever, 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 ever. And this is one of the one of the reasons why I don't um, I I don't really date because it doesn't matter whether it's a phone call or a chat online or a chat in person. I'm able to see if if the people who I'm talking to it doesn't matter who it even if it's not in a, for a relationship or dating. I can tell if the person is an unloving person based on regular conversation. Based on their view, someone can tell me something extremely simple, and I can get their whole life, their whole their whole way of being, based on that. It doesn't take much, but it, the only reason why it doesn't take much is because I understand what love is, and I can identify when it's not present. And when people, just in general, and they don't even think about these things. See, people who try to try to play the game and, and have a facade, they present love only in certain aspects. They only present the facade only in certain aspects. But they don't understand that their soul is always present in everything that they say and do. So when they're not trying to present the facade, the true self comes out. And this is how I'm able to see what's within people. This is how I'm able to see if someone is being authentic or not. Just a general conversation. It doesn't even have to be that. I can listen to their conversation with someone else and tell if they're loving or not. It's very simple. Very simple. So, you know, <laughs> people will say, well, you don't even know me. You're judging me. <laughs> no. Just because you have a lack of awareness and you're not able to see what I'm able to see doesn't mean I'm judging you. It just means I'm able to see something before you're able to see it yourself about yourself. That's all there is to it. And I, I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to say that I'm, I'm able or capable, but clearly I'm able to do something that they're, they are incapable of doing at this point. But I can't convince anybody of this, and I, it's not my, my job to convince. It's not even my will to convince someone else of that. That's just something that they'll have, they'll have to come to uh, realize, you know, themselves. But yeah, you know, I, I, um, this is one of the reasons why I don't engage with too many people because I know we're living in a in a world where a degraded soul is the norm. Like that's the norm. Like that's the norm that I'm going to run into because that's just the state of the world. 
So it's not because I don't like dealing with people. I just know what I'm, I would be dealing with. Now, not everyone is like that. And at times you run into people who um, are not so... You run into people who are not so dark. And they have some type of light. And they might not have light in all aspects of their lives. But in general, they're pretty good people. You know, probably not... I, mean, I should say they probably don't have a lot of rage and anger. But they have a lot of pain. They have people have pain, and a lot of people suppress their pain. But I mean, they're not angry, mean, spiteful people. And so I tend to avoid people like this. One because it's very difficult to interact with them because they only have one way of interacting, which is through violence and anger and hatred. And you know, their their whole being is is about hurting another, and that's how much pain they're in. And I understand that someone who was very angry and and, and vicious isn't like that because they want to be like that. They're like that because they don't they don't know how else to be. There's so much pain that they're dealing with. They don't know how to be anything else because they don't even know why they're doing what they're doing. They just know that they're just angry. They don't most people don't know why they're angry, but I do. I understand and this is why I have to have compassion for for people. Now it doesn't always happen because I have my own emotional injuries that get triggered when people do certain things. Like, some people do things and I'm like, whatever, it doesn't even, like, there's no thought. But there's certain things that people do that really get me and you can see it when I'm driving. Like, when people get in my way and prevent me from moving forward, I get triggered. Why? Because this is an emo this tied to an emotional injury of people not allowing me to express myself and, and move forward and be free. I didn't have that. So, anytime someone prevents me from doing that I'm going to be triggered and so that means that that's something that I have to work on and release in order for that to stop happening at some point I will be able to get on the road <laughs> and and uh, and not be triggered by these people because a lot of times I'm not triggered like usually like um, I don't know I don't know like if I'm driving like I'm not triggered every day um, like right now I'm not triggered um, because I don't have, well, one, because I don't have, um, usually on my way home, I'm not as triggered, but I'm more triggered in the morning because I have somewhere to be. And I feel when they get in front of me and go slow, they're pretty, they're preventing me from getting to the place that I, I need to be at the time that I want to be there. So it's a desire for me to be somewhere at a certain time. And when they get in front of me, they're preventing that from happening. And so that's why I get triggered but on the way home I'm not trying to be home at a certain time I get home when I get home it's no big deal to me so I'm not triggered and so anytime you desire something and it's not coming to you you're going to get triggered anytime like anytime like in even you know in the topic that I'm talking about in terms of love anytime that someone prevents you from doing something it means that they're not loving you now understand this anytime anyone gets in front of me and cuts me off or goes slow or whatever the only reason why that's happening is because I'm not loving myself I'm not loving myself enough to release the emotional injury that I know is causing these people to be in my way does that make sense <laughs> so you know it's this is how you you can identify you know if someone is loving you or not or if you're loving yourself or not because anything that just hap anything that happens to you and understand that any any unloving thing that anyone does to you is because of you so it's not really the other person well it's the other person not loving you but understand that you leave yourself i leave myself open to that unloving experience it's always going to come back to us. It's never going to just be the other person. The other person is playing, is using their free will to carry out these unloving things that they can't help to care, but carry out because it's within their soul to be unloving. But it's only doing that to help you out so that you can see the unloving things within you that even cause them to be in your life. So, like I was mentioning, you know, with the guy, you know, it doesn't matter. And I told him, I was like, you know, it doesn't matter if, I think I told him that, I'm not sure. I think I told him, it doesn't matter if, you know, he's not with her. She's still going to attract 
a person who's going to continually do things that question their trust or her, their, her trust in them. And he's going to continue to uh, get involved with abusive women who are only looking to control him. And that's just the way it's going to be. So you can deal with the same face or you can deal with the different face. But the great thing about this is if you deal with it, if he dealt with it or if he decided to deal with the emotional injuries while he was with her, as he's transforming and changing, their relationship will cease anyway. And he will be okay with it at that point. Right now, he's not okay with it because he doesn't love himself. But as he works on himself and he understands that he is worth more than, than some woman who's willing to manipulate and control him, what will happen is he'll start to love himself and he'll realize I'm more than this. I'm better than this. I don't want to be with you anymore. It doesn't feel good to be with you anymore. Hasta la vista. Just like that. And either that can happen or she can heal some of her emotional injuries and they work together and improve their lives and change their experience as a couple. So many things can happen, but first and foremost, you have to love yourself because that is the, the, the point of, of change itself. It's never going to be in the other person. We never, we don't have control of their soul or how they, we can control them, but that's an unloving thing. So the best thing to do is to leave everybody alone, change yourself, and allow the people, and allow a different type of people to come into your existence. Allow a different type of soul, a different, a different soul with a different level of love within them to come into your experience. That's what you want. You don't want the same old raggedy people coming into your life if you're changing. What you want are the good loving people who you who you will enjoy having a relationship with, be it uh, romantic or non-romantic or platonic. That's the whole goal. So when we're dealing with love, and, and this is the, and this is the thing is like, love is um, love love it, it doesn't criticize. So if someone's criticizing you, it's not loving. And if you're staying there listening to it, you're not loving yourself. Um, if someone's always saying that you know you're bad or you can't do something or you keep making mistakes, that's not loving because love never tears you down. Love uplifts you. Love teaches you. Love shows you the way. Love shows you an alternative. That's it. So this is how you, you know if love is present or not. So like with my family members, some of them, I, they're not loving at all. And so therefore, I don't want to be abused by these unloving people. I don't want to be lied to. I don't want to be manipulated. I don't want to be any of these things. And so I keep my distance. And there are some people, there are some family members who don't do that, but there's other issues going on. But some people do not do that. But some people will. Like my sister, my sister is a loving person. Until she feels threatened and she'll strike at you. Well, that's not love. So that, therefore she's not a loving person. So this is, and it's, you know, you just have to, you have to just, you just have to, um, you just have to accept it. That's one thing I, I've noticed is with love is you just have to accept the definition of love and you have to apply it across the board with every single soul. It doesn't matter if they're related to you or not. If not, you're going to screw yourself because if you don't hold on to the true definition of love, that means you're going to hold on to something else and that something else is going to cause you pain in the end. For instance, with my sister, I don't really engage with my sister much anymore. Well, why? Because I already know how she operates. So the thing is, the universe will bring her if, 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 if my soul says that I'm worthy of, of loving people, then she will come back into my life a changed person. But if my soul says that I'm worthy of loving people and she has not changed, the universe will keep her at bay. Just like that. I don't have to do anything. We, we never have to do anything other than just hold love within our soul and the experiences just happen. Every day we're going to experience something in our daily lives. You go here, you go there. You know, I don't have, like for instance, I'm, you know, obviously, you know, I'm part black, but I don't have a lot of bad experiences with white people. 
I just don't. So no matter how many KKKs are out there, or how many, you know, of these, you know, whatever, racist people who are out there, I don't engage with them like that. Like, they don't come, they're out there, I know they're out there, but I'm not engaging with them. And so I have to ask myself, why am I not engaging with them? Well, that's because my soul doesn't dictate I engage with them. It's just that simple. I don't believe that that all, you know, I, well, first of all, I don't believe that all white people are like that, are racist people. So therefore, I'm not going to get that in order for the universe. It, it, let me just put it this way. The universe does not have to bring me that because that does not dwell within my soul. That's it. So I don't get that experience. However, <laughs> however, there are other experiences that I get. And the thing is, like, most of the rejection that I receive um, have never been from white people. I've never experienced that. But I have experienced it from black people. I've experienced it from Hispanics. I have. And I can, I don't want to say continue, but yeah, there is still, um, well, I should say this. There are people who, um, like, there are people in my life who have, how would I word that? I would, I, okay, I should say this. So, like, the organization that I work for is predominantly, well, it was predominantly black, but now it's shifting, so it's more Hispanic, and it's more women, uh, there's more women in the, in the organization than there are men. There's very few men, actually. And so, when I said my earlier, I think, I don't know which video it was, I was like, you know, I know I can't get any raises, and I know I cannot get any promotions. And I have to look at this, because I'm looking at my reality. I'm, well, I'm looking at the physical, my physical reality, my, my history, my past. And these people are still in power who don't like me. A lot of people don't like me because of what I represent. I represent integrity, I represent honesty, and I've had interactions with people where this is just very evident. And so people back off. This is the thing is, people who are unloving will back off from people who are uh, who are loving because it exposes their unloving behavior and, and, and ways. And so they, I don't, they don't bother me. But I had mentioned in this video this morning that I'm not sure if I'll up, upload or not. Maybe I'll just do it. Um, so, even the thing is, because my experience was my experience, the people who are still in power still, I still, oh, I should say, they don't bother me. They leave me alone, but they're not actively uh, trying to attack me or assault me, which was, which is completely different than the past. Like, in the past, people were trying to control me and manipulate me and try to get me to do things that I would not do. And they're still in power, but they just don't engage with me. But that doesn't mean that they like me and they're going to recognize the work that I do. That's not what that means because they haven't changed. I have changed. So that just means that they're not going to engage with me in the manner in which they used to engage with me because I have changed. But that doesn't mean that they're now singing Kumbaya and they're like, you know what? I've treated this person badly. I'm going to give him a raise. Now that can happen, but they would have to change in order for that to happen. And so my 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 uh, my the means of income that I that I currently have are completely different than back then. So no, I didn't get raises and I did get promotions, but my pay has increased. My pay has actually doubled. My salary has doubled without doing, um, without, without getting it from the organization that I work for full time. Not even the part time thing. That's, that's completely separate than, than doubling my salary. So things have changed in my life, but the other people haven't changed. And so this is, you know, even though they have issues with me, um, it's just kind of changed in terms of how they approach. And that's only because I have changed. I'm the only one who has changed. They haven't changed. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. I don't care if they change or not because it's not my reality. It's their reality. And if they want a different experience, then they're going to have to change. That's it. But I can tell you this. Those people who have not changed are falling apart, literally. 
they're literally falling apart. I mean, falling apart. I've, 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 you know, I've never been able to really see someone transform and degrade themselves, but I've watched this. I've been at this agency for 15 years, so I know what they started out like and where they are now. And I know where I started out like, like where I started out 15 years ago and where I am now. And there's very little change in me. Very little change. But there's massive change. I mean, literally, their bodies are falling apart. Oh, Lord Jesus, if you knew. <laughs> if you knew. And this is, you know, this is one of the reasons why I try to continue moving in the direction of love because I can see the power in that. I can see the power of love. I can see the power of my own transformation. I use myself as a guide. I use myself as an example. I use myself as a scientific fact that these laws exist and that love is powerful. Look, you don't know the power of love until you've engaged it. So all these people who are bitter and angry, they will never they will never know the power of love because they haven't engaged with it. And they choose not to engage with it. And the longer or the more they choose not to engage with it, the more they're going to continue suffering. The more they're going to continue to have experiences that they don't want to have but will continue to have. This is why love is so important. This is why it's important to identify what it is and, and, and where it is and and who's who's exuding the love and who's holding it back and who's who's wanting to you know be a part of it and who has who wants nothing to do with it. All of these things are important because all of these things help you make a decision in your life on some level or another. If you see unloving people and you see what they're doing, back off. Don't engage with them. Why would you? You're going to end up doing things that you may not know, like you may not be aware of that are unloving, and you may end up engaging things, but the reason why you would end up engaging in them is because you don't know if it's loving or not. Like, I can see when someone's doing something that's unloving. Like, just from the jump, I can see it. I can also see the potentials of, of the unloving things that people uh, would possibly do based on what they're currently doing. And it's interesting because someone had asked me about psychics. And uh, they want to see a psychic. And they ask me my thought about it. And I'm like, well, okay. Well, why do you want to see a psychic? Well, I want to see if I'm headed in the right direction. I'm like, right direction? Hmm. And so I asked, well, what's the right direction? What's the right direction? She goes, well, I just want to know, like, if I'm headed, like, where I'm headed, like, what's going to happen? I go, well, what makes you think that you would know if that direction that they tell you you're headed is a good one or a bad one. And she was like, huh. I said, oh, there's, the thing is, a psychic can only tell you where you're headed. But at any given time, like, oh, what I told her was, a psychic does not have the information to tell you, like, what you're going to be doing. Like, you don't have a destiny. Your destiny is changing every single day, possibly, if you're changing within yourself. If not, of course, your the trajectory of your life can be, you know, told or foretold. It can be seen very easily. And generally, these psychics are talking to spirits who can see more of your trajectory than you can, which is why you're going to a psychic, because you can't see what they can see. <laughs> but you can have the power to see your direction and where you're headed if you're in tune with who you are if you take your life and understand that you are in full control of every aspect of it you will never need a psychic you will never need to ask anybody where you're headed where you're going what you're going to be doing because you would have already determined what you're going to be doing in every moment you are able to say, I'm going to go here or I'm going to go there. I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. That is going to change the trajectory of your life. You, nobody else. There's no psychic who can tell you, oh, you're, I see you with, you know, this, this guy, da, 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 da. Yeah, they may see you with this guy. But what they did tell you is this guy may beat the hell out of you and you don't even know it. You understand? So just because someone says, oh, I see you with the guy, you know, he's uh, tall light brown eyes and you know he's very well built and you're like "Ooh, wow that sounds awesome but you're not aware that that well-built man is going to use his muscle to knock the shit out of you 
You understand? Like, you don't see this. You see what you want to see. And trust me, these spirits, they know what your desires are. So when any time you go to a psychic, trust me, you you've been read. You're you've been read. And they're giving to you they're giving you exactly what you want to hear so you can ah, feel good about yourself. Oh, I felt great. Oh, the psychic, they just, you know, put me in a good space. And yes, you can create from that space. But that doesn't mean that you're going to you're only going to create from that space because you still have your soul to contend with, which which hasn't changed at all. <laughs> if you just went to a psychic. So, you know, I say love yourself and create your reality. You know, if you don't know where you want to go, think about where you want to go. Take that time to think about what you want to do with your life here on Earth. You're not here for very long. Look, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years is not very long. And, you know, depending on your soul condition, you may live to be 100 years, but you may not be able to walk. Or you may not be able to see or you may be able to do all of these things and be completely active until the day you die. Like, your soul condition dictates all of that. So I say sit back, ask yourself what you want to do, feel about the things you, that you come up with. Do you, do you resonate with that? And then ask yourself why you want to do it. Because sometimes we desire things that we really don't desire. And we're like, where is that coming from? Was it coming from an addiction? Is this going to make me feel better? But because it's, you know, it's looked at as a great thing to do. Like it's, you know, people look at lawyers and doctors as being, you know, a great accomplishment. But look how freaking miserable these lawyers and doctors are. Just look. Look at them. And you can tell by their soul condition. And you can tell their soul condition by their life. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. All right, everybody. That's it about love. That's how you figure out love. That's how you that's how you see it. That's how you identify it. That's how you identify when it's present and when it's not present. Love will never ask you to or love will never ask anything of you at all other than just to be loving. That's it. Just to be. It allows you freedom. It allows you to I am so thirsty right now. I don't know what I want. If I want to stop and get something. Um So let's see. Hungry too. I didn't have a lunch. Mm, can I make a salad? I guess I can, but I'm not filling a salad. Anyways, Friday. Uh, so yeah. Um, love. Gosh, if you can, if you can hold on to some of the things that I said in this video, you're off to a better start than most people on the planet because they don't understand it. They really don't. They think love is, if I give you this, you know, if I buy you a box of chocolates and some flowers, you'll give me some good sex tonight. That's not love. Love will never ask you to give anything in return. That's what I'm saying. Just because, you know, um, you, you, uh, it, it just, love doesn't, just, it doesn't. And the thing is, we have conditioned ourselves, humanity, have conditioned ourselves to operate in this matter. To, it's like, oh, you know, I want to do something for my wife so, you know, she'll love me. No. It, love will never ask for anything in return, including love, because it won't be love. <laughs> That's my point. You cannot be loving and expect something in return. If you are expecting something in return, you are not operating in love. If you want to buy your wife a, dip, a dishwasher, then you simply just want to buy your wife a dip, dishwasher. That's it. That's it. You don't want anything in return. You don't want her to, you know, make a meal for you or do anything. You just want to say here. And you tell her you don't have to do anything. I just did it because I love you. That's it. I just did it because I love you. How hard is that? It's not. It's not hard at all. This is what I'm saying. Love will never ask for something in return. So if you're asking for something in return, you're not coming from a loving place. And if anybody gives you something and expects something in return, they're not loving you either. Love never. And this is the thing. You come to find that there isn't much love on this planet. That's what you'll come to find is it doesn't present itself very often. 
and it's rare. And the only way we're going to stop that rarity or stop it from being a rarity is engaging in it. That's it. That's how we're going to, or that's how you are going to see more love on this planet is when people start engaging in love. When people start understanding what love is. That's it. That is it. You know, even though people engage in addictions and, you know, they call it love. Like, there was a couple of examples that I had in my head and now I'm, like, drawing a blank. Maybe because I'm hungry. Um, what were they? Mm, I don't know. I forgot. Anyway, um... Yes. So, I think I think that's it. I think that's enough about love. Um, I mean, I said the one thing that you know the basis of love is that it will never ask for anything in return. So you know, if you're asking for something in return or you want something in return, ooh, look, Bradley Avenue, Bradley Avenue. That's my name, Zachary Bradley. <clears throat> I have my own street. But I don't own anything on this street. <laughs> so I can't claim it as mine. Uh, anyway. There isn't anything on this street I would want anyway. If you knew what was on this street. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, what? What else? What else? Yeah. You'll find that uh, love is very... Uh, it's, a, it's a rarity. It is a rarity. Even if people give and they don't ask for something in return, a lot of times they're asking for something in return. Like a thank you. Or it's, oh my gosh, you're so sweet. You're so loving. You're so caring. Sometimes you, you don't know that they're looking for something in return. But you do. If you're giving something and you're like, oh, they didn't even say thank you. Well, you didn't give it in love. Anytime you give anything to anyone and expect them to say thank you and be appreciative or be appreciative of it, you are not loving. You are not acting in love. You are not doing anything associated with love. Costco. You're just not. You ain't. <laughs> You is not. Is you is or is you ain't. So, that's that, people. That is, is this man is asleep. That, that is love. That is what you call love. That's how you know when it's present, and that's how you know when it ain't. Isn't that beautiful? I think it's so beautiful to know that. To know that. To know that. And this helps you in terms of preventing yourself from being used, abused, taken advantage of, giving yourself to people who you know won't uh, appreciate it. Like if you know that that you that someone doesn't appreciate something, you're not going to give them a gift. Does that make sense? But you also understand that you when you do give something. You don't expect anything in return. Now put those two together and you will stop being burned and used on on two accounts. One, you won't be giving something that you could possibly be keeping and keeping for yourself that obviously you were given to have. Like if you have something, then that means you were you were granted this, whatever it is. D does that make sense? So like um like the the example with you know the family member that I, I lent money to you know it's like <clears throat> like I already know like you know it's like they really haven't said anything about you know the money that they owe me and I haven't asked them I'm like whatever like I see my mistake um, at some point I will let them know but I, I, I see my mistake but my mistake just owning my mistake is is only one part of it I have to speak my truth Meaning, I have to speak how I really feel about the situation. So if I feel hurt, if I feel like it, I was used, if I feel betrayed, then I have to voice that to the person who betrayed me and used me. Oh, that accident is broken on that truck behind me. Sorry. Um, and so there's two parts to that. That 
need to be need to be taken care of. Ownership of my part and to address the other person in terms of what they did. I have to let them know this is how this is what your actions did to me. I'm not saying you're responsible. I'm just saying this is how I felt. And I would appreciate if you don't ever do it again. Very simple. Very simple. And the thing is, that prevents the other person. It, 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 it helps the other person. This is the, the amazing thing about truth. Is it allows you to release that. It's like you're honoring yourself. You're informing the other person of their unloving ways. Allowing them to become aware of their unloving ways. And then that's it. Like you've done your part. You've lived in love. And that, and all of that you have just lived in love. And that's it. You walk away living life how you feel you should live your life. Learning a lesson from that. You, give, you gave truthful information to the other person. Allowing them to walk away and use their free will how they, they see fit based on the information that they have. Maybe now they won't ever do that with anyone. Maybe now they'll, they'll think twice before they ask someone for money. Like, well, can I really pay it back? You know, am, am I unsure? Because if I'm unsure, I can't say that I'll promise to pay it back. Do you understand? So this is why I love truth so much. This is why I love love so much. Because it just it just takes care of everything. Like, you, It's the one thing that just takes care of everything. And you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to sneak around. You don't have to make stuff up. You don't have to worry. It takes all of that away. All of it. It just wipes the slate clean. Just like that. Just like that. And just like that, I'm about to enjoy this weekend. So you guys have a wonderful weekend too. If you if you can. If you have enough um, uh, good stuff in that soul of yours. Then try to enjoy it. And if you don't. Make some changes so that you do. It's really that simple. All right, everybody. Take care now. Bye.